afternoon, everybody. Time for another episode of Shower Thoughts. Essentially, I want to do our um, weight check-in today. It's been about two weeks, and I have gained 3% muscle and lost about 6 pounds. So, I've been trading, basically. Um, I'm, try I'm not trying to get smaller. I'm not trying to lose weight. I'm trying to stay the same size, but I'm trying to tone bulk, you know, that sort of thing. I want to be big. I don't want to be small. Last time I lost weight, I lost like 70 pounds like that. It was nothing, but it took about six months, and I lost. Well, I didn't lose that much muscle. I still gained it, but it was spelt. You know what I mean? It wasn't bulky. It wasn't big like I wanted to. I want to be the Hulk. I want to be Donkey Kong. I want to be a bodybuilder looking motherfucker. So that's what we're going for. And that means a different approach than I took last time. Keto is really good for losing weight. It's not really good for putting on muscle. So the proof is in the pudding. In two weeks, we're down six pounds. That's a lot less weight loss than before. When I was on keto, I was losing six pounds a week. So it's about half as, half as quick. But I also didn't make those kinds of gains on keto. So that's something to be considered. And I think I had like maybe one cheat day where I ate, my sister went to On the Border and she got me a um, chimichanga with like chips and queso and like all that stuff. And I loved it, it was fucking amazing. Oh, and I ate Taco Bell one time during that period. But other than that, it's been strictly chicken and rice with either broccoli or Brussels sprouts and two protein shakes a day. Sometimes I would do um, sometimes I would do two of those meal preps depending on the situation or how hungry I was. But at the end of the day, I'm allowing myself to snack. Like I'm still eating nuts. I'm still like if I'm really seeing red, I'm gonna I'm gonna eat something. But even with that amount of buffer, even if I do add an extra meal in, it's still within my caloric range to lose weight and gain muscle. So that's where we're at. Um, I posted a picture of my workout routine. It's been very consistent. Um, the reason that I had a dead week at the very beginning of that image though was because I switched over to my new email um, in May the Dragonfly Catalyst email, not, you know, my old name email. So, that week was actually a full week, even though it looked like a break week. So we're going on, it was early May, maybe even earlier than that. I don't think I've taken a rest week since like March, March or early April. I can't prove it, but I think that's, that's the case. This is very um It's very interesting to see the difference. Because I went from um my body weight exercises, which was mostly like core work. I was doing a lot of planks, I was doing a lot of crunches, to just weights. I haven't been doing my planks at all the last couple weeks. And the crunches, instead of doing a hundred crunches every day. I've been doing like, starting off with like 20 or 30 crunches, and I've just been doing weighted crunches. So I'm adding weights, I'm getting those back up to 50, and then I'm gonna start, once I get them back up to five sets of 10, I'm gonna start incrementally putting them up like to 11, 12, 13, and then until I get them back up to 20. But since I was working on so many other muscle groups, I didn't feel bad at all for like, taking a little bit of effort off of the crunches. My core is pretty damn strong. Not worried about that at all. Um, what else, what else? Oh yeah, we started taking multivitamins again, but that's only begun two days ago, three days ago, something like that. I got bug bites or like some kind of like rash, maybe from the heat. I did get prickly heat last year, um, but I got a, like an itchy spot right there on my arm. So I'm using that charcoal scrub to see if that clears up the pores down there. If it is prickly heat, then it's just clogged up sweat pores. 
which makes sense. The underarm's like a high traffic area for friction. So we're gonna try that out. And my face is almost cleared up. I still got a couple spots, but I'm still using that charcoal scrub. It's been like um, probably a month, month and a half. And it got worse before it got better. It got a lot worse before it got better. But I'm finally almost clear. Stuck in there. Even though I thought maybe I was reacting to the product, it's been working. When coupled with a, a moisturizer, it's been really effective, actually. I've got trivia tonight. They won last time. We're gonna have to prove that we're just as good when I do come. I don't know about you guys, but the slingshot effect is real right now. It has been so crazy. Last night, the last couple days, I've just been dealing with things that have already been dealt with. They've been bubbling up, we've been healing, processing, releasing, and I'm realizing, I think, it's kind of like, I keep on calling it a stress test, but I'm not sure it's a stress test after all. I think it's more like a, a prove what you've learned, prove your coping mechanisms, like <laughs> prove that you know how to manage yourself right now. Because every time this happens, the slingshot, every time this happens, you get pulled back right before you catapult forward. It's right before massive progress is made. And you would not feel like you're being pulled back unless it was for a slingshot forward. When, you know, I actually experienced the same thing on the scale because on keto, my body fluctuated a little bit, but it didn't fluctuate like this. Like on carbs, day to day, I'll see up to five pounds one way or the other. And it makes it difficult to get net progress. But now that I've been fasting for 24 hours, I can objectively say, okay, this is what I am with nothing in my system. So it might take you stripping everything down to your bare bones to be like, okay, this is how I respond now, this is how I react now, this is how I feel, this is what we're doing. There's something important here about, we've been seeing a necessity to uh, lean into your routine the last couple of days also. I think, especially after dealing with such intense emotions the last couple of days, we really need to do something for our inner child right now. I'm smelling pineapple, is it this? This doesn't smell, no, it just smells like conditioner. It's kind of floral, but I swear to God, I got a whiff of pineapple right there. Like I use for my smoothies. Maybe I need a smoothie. Hmm. Pineapple. Tropical. Ocean breeze. Let's, if you can't go on vacation, maybe get near some water. I feel like water always helps connect you to that peaceful part of yourself, that nurturing, that healing energy. Even if it's just the shower, you know? This this is my safe space. This is where I go when I'm... It, it, sometimes I don't even need to shower, you know? Like, sometimes I've already showered two, three times that day, and I just need to, like, get some emotions out real quick. So, not, so I go purify, you know what I mean? Cleanse, whatever you want to call it. Water. Washes away all impurities. I think there's also been um, a feeling the last couple days of being misunderstood, but being focused on how you're perceived, maybe. Because I don't give a shit what anybody thinks, honestly. I really don't. But there's something about like the idea of being misunderstood by somebody that still hurts my feelings. If I feel like somebody just doesn't get where I was coming from or they make the wrong assumptions about me, it still hurts. And I think we need to release that feeling of caring. If somebody wants to misunderstand you, let them. Move on with your life. Don't spend your thoughts on it. It's not worth your time. Thanks for watching, everybody. Good job this week.